Good afternoon, good morning, wherever you may be, everyone. So it's my pleasure to, together with uh, Senero Costa Jr., um, a researcher at the Alliance of Biodiversity uh, International and SEAT, and the project lead of what we call P2 in Brazil, and Jonathan Mokshell, a senior economist at the Alliance leading P3. Now, these P123 um, hopefully explain themselves through the presentation. So it's my pleasure to, to introduce to you a bit the Agroecology Transitions Programme. Um, the longer title is Agroecological Transitions Program for Building Resilient and Inclusive Agriculture and Food Systems. I think that's something all of us here today would like to do. So let's have a look at what we have in mind when it comes to this. The overall objective is to enable climate-informed agroecological transitions by farmers in low- and middle-income countries. And it does so by tackling some of the key barriers to agroecological transitions that have been identified. And it worked through three interrelated projects. So project one, P1, focuses on holistic performance metrics. Once again, we'll get to the details of it in a second, but you see how it relates to others and it very much aligns with your question, Philippe. Then P2 is on inclusive digital tools. Sinero will tell you more about it, but I think this part is very exciting because many people skeptical or critical of agroecology feel agroecology is backwards or anything of that sort. And to convince people of the opposite, that agroecology is the real modernity rather than backwards in terms of green revolution type of technologies, I think will be very helpful for making a stronger case for agroecology. And then third is the project on private sector incentives and investments. Again, a very critical bottleneck for making agroecology work, ensuring that the private sector is in board, that it's done so in an inclusive manner, and that there's more investments for agroecology. Um, Jonathan will give you a detailed introduction to the project, well, detailed in five minutes. Anyway, um, so the program is implemented in eight countries, as you're seeing on the screen. The P1 on metrics is working on eight, all eight of these countries, whereas um, the digital tools component P2, please correct me if I'm wrong, is working on Vietnam and Brazil, and uh, P3 is focusing on Vietnam and Ethiopia. So there's a country overlap. And then on a program level, we're trying to engage a global community of change makers. Very well. With this very brief overview of the program as a such, I would like to just quickly let you know what this P1 on holistic performance metrics is all about. So as the title says, it's about performance assessment. And it's supposed to do so in a very holistic manner, taking as much as possible all externalities of social and environmental um, dimensions into account. The idea behind this is we all know that agricultural and food systems are at the very center of sustainable development. Agriculture is highly impact, in, in, impacted by climate change, by biodiversity losses, etc. And it's a major cause of both of these global crises. And at the same time, we know that agricultural and food systems are at the center of poverty, of employment, of, of sustainable consumption, you name it, it's right there. So if we want to take this multifunctionality of agriculture into account, we also need to ensure that the success of projects, initiatives, investments, policies, et cetera, in regard to agriculture and food systems is measured holistically and take this multifunctionality into account. Otherwise, it's simply not going to work. And we're going to see reports and success measures saying, oh, this approach functions better than the other. But if we just look at profitability, we're missing the point. Agriculture has a lot of cultural, social, economic, and environmental roles to play. So what we're doing with this program is we're starting on a global level, first do, going through a very, very detailed evaluation and uh, review of existing metrics. Both holistic frameworks, including tape, but also including a lot of tools that are not directly related to agroecology, but more generally to agricultural and food system performance, and then individual um, metrics in, in categories like soil health, like um, profitability, like climate change mitigation, like resilience, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. 
you can imagine it's quite an extensive task at thousands and thousands of papers that we're currently screening to come up with a very long list of what indicators, metrics, methods, and protocols are available. And then we're working with, and I'm glad that Carlos is here today, with stats for sd to turn this reviewed long list of metrics into a framework that can be put into a database that provides solutions for people looking at success measures at different levels and from a different perspective. So it goes across scales, whether you want to look at success on a farm level or an entire food system level, the idea is that we can provide the answers to it. And it should be extremely user-friendly for different categories of users, basically. So the component of co-creation and engagement with stakeholders is absolutely central throughout the project. First, finding out what, what, are, you, what are potential users of the metric that we're providing currently using? What would they like to use? What is holding them back? for measuring success more holistically, and then co-design solutions together with them, and eventually test what we're developing on different scales with farmers, with um, development agencies, with policymakers, with investors, with private sector ent entities, etc., in a research and development context. And Based on all of this, we're refining the database, we're putting it online, we're publishing guidelines for developing these um, systems and metrics more, more uh, sustainably. And then we're going into the outreach and communication phase, basically, um, to make sure that users actually take this up. Because we can develop the best metrics in the world. If people don't use it, we're not, we're not succeeding, obviously. right? And just briefly where we stand at the moment, right now, we're at the review stage. We're halfway, two thirds through the, the review, basically. We will publish the results, obviously. We're starting with the design of a framework for this holistic assessment, and we're working together with the great people of stats for sd for the database design. And we've just started now the stakeholder engagement process to, to get perfect input from the potential users and categorize them, put them in working groups, work together with them in the most meaningful way possible. And um, I hope within three and a half years, for anybody of you who wants to measure success, we'll have the answers for you. Thank you very much. With this, I would like to hand over to Siniro, who should be um, online and have um, let us know what P2 on Inclusive Digital Tools is all about. Siniro? Sure. Thanks, Matthias. Thanks for the introduction. Can, can you hear me okay? Perfect, yes. Okay, thanks. So I, uh, as Matthias said, I'm Senior Costa Jr. I'm uh, the interim PI of uh, P2. And uh, on behalf of Lina Wollenberg and team, I would like to present some updates on P2 that is dedicated to digital uh, tools. So basically, <clears throat> P2 or digital tools it aims to support the use of uh, digital resources and uh, seeds and science to empower farmers to co-create, adapt, and innovate practices for climate-informed agroecological outcomes at scale. And uh, we have a focus on, uh, at least in this first phase, a focus on the livestock sector in Brazil and in rice value chain in Vietnam. Right, and then. Uh, we have basically also three phases of this project that is split in year one, two, and three. So year one, we have uh, the review of digital tools and the digital ecosystem. Year two, that is 2023, dedicated to improve these dig digital tools and the digital ecosystem. And year three, 2024, that will be dedicated to scale impact. Right? And then year one, that is review. Is, is complete. So we have already published several uh, material in, in, in that regard. So for example, we have a, a global and regional digital tool reviews. So global Brazil and Vietnam digital tool reviews already there. We have uh, briefs on exemplary agroecology and climate and climate change digital tool features. We also have reports that we run uh, as a result that that stake, stakeholder consultations we run in both uh, countries last year. And we also have developed at the global level um, um, a guide or a report that describes principles for uh, socially inclusive digital tools for smallholder 
uh, farmers. And all this material from year one is already uh, published and public, publicly available. So you can access uh, this hyperlink to, to get access to, to this material. And year two will be, as I said, dedicated to improve the digital tool and improve the dig digital tools and digital ecosystems in both countries. So we have already uh, engaged with implementing partners that in Brazil will be ECRAF and Solidaridad Network. And uh, in, in, in Vietnam, it will be uh, IRI, uh, who is actually leading this effort in Vietnam, plus DART and SRP. And uh, as activities, we are going to develop a training curriculum. We are going to train uh, at least 30 stakeholders across these two countries. And we also are going to strengthen partnerships, uh, especially uh, focus on, on public and, and private partnerships to, to, to uptake uh, learnings and products from this, pro from this uh, P2 project. And as outcomes of this year two, we are expecting that uh, ba basically two outcomes. One is that two uh, developers and farmers organizations, they are able to identify ways of adapting digital tools for more inclusiveness and climate informed agroecology uh, at scale. And the sec uh, second outcome is that two developers, companies, farmers, organizations, and other stakeholders become aware of the value of uh, farmer uh, co-creation, this co-creation process uh, of knowledge for TA and P in PA, or, uh, meaning uh, technical advisors in, in, in performance assessment to improve the, the outcomes of, and transparency, transparency, transparency of the practices that are being deployed. So uh, that's it by now. I stop there and, and thank you. Uh, back to you, Matthias. Yep, my name is Jonathan Mokshaw and the project leader for P3. Um, Agroecology represents a paradigm shift which we are all very excited about. And we know the public sector is investing a lot, um, not as much as we wish to see. And the private sector is also currently aligning its own objectives to agroecological principles uh, across different landscapes. However, we also see some concerns when it comes to the private sector's investment into agroecology. And some of this relates to what their interests are, uh, what is the motivation behind those investments? Uh, are they transparent enough um, in those different investments? And we see the label often that this is just another form of greenwashing, which creates a puzzle and a conundrum which needs to be addressed. So based on this puzzle, the aim of project three, private sector incentives and investment is to support and improve transparent private and private public incentive models, which support agroecological transitions that also empower farmers, consumers, and local organizations. And the overall objective is that we want to improve incentive structures and mechanisms that will help contribute to agroecological transitions across three different landscapes. And these three different landscapes is across three different continents. So in Peru, we are looking at cocoa value chains. In Vietnam, we are looking into rice value chains. And in Ethiopia, we are working on wheat value chains. Across all these different projects, we aim to reach at least 120 farmers um, in Peru, 100,000 in Ethiopia, and 80,000 in Vietnam, respectively. And the project has three main components. Those three components, the first one looks into private sector incentives and investments and the mechanisms that are important for transitioning to agroecology. The second looks into metrics and traceability tools, which links very well with project one and project two. And the third component looks into how to co-design and scale out innovative mechanisms that will be important and also sustainable within the countries in which we work. Next slide, please. So based on all this for year, for year one, which is 2022, 
we've been able to start with a number of reviews across the three different project components, looking into incentives. And in the case of Ethiopia, for example, what we've noticed is that majority of the existing incentives are focusing on markets and um, market price support, whilst we have very less focusing on cross compliance. And in terms of outcomes, majority is focusing on environment, very less focusing on social and other important um, indicators which are necessary for agroecology in terms of inclusion. So for metrics and traceability, we are also conducting a number of reviews looking into how to integrate metrics that are important for transitioning to agroecological food systems. And then we are currently also reviewing the existing multi-stakeholder platforms, which uh, those that have worked very well and what some of the learnings are in order to improve our engagement within the different countries. Next slide. So looking into the future, we want to continue with the reviews and finalize those reviews, translate them into what we call decision support tools, which will look into country profiles for incentives, investments, and for metrics. And for this year, also be able to engage with our stakeholders within the countries and take stock of the existing baseline through a baseline study for specific agroecological innovations within the three landscapes. Next slide. So across the three different projects, uh, metrics and digital tools and private sector incentives and investments, we aim to be able to provide information that will be important for decision makers to co-design and also use holistic sustainability metrics. Uh, number two, on the digital tools, to be able to have companies use digital tools that are inclusive to co-create knowledge and assess outcomes. And for component three, to have private sector incentives and mechanisms that will be taken up by both private sector and also farmers and business models that are important to help sustainability of the practices that will be promoted across the different countries. Final slide. So we also want to thank our partners, um, the EU and also um, IFAD for managing this grant and all the partners we are working with in the different landscapes. Over.